Good evening, everybody. How are we doing tonight? <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, I'm so proud of all of you guys. You guys made it through Butcher. I remember when we first walked in as freshmen and we were a, a lot shorter, a lot more immature, a little bit pudgier, and I'm looking around and you guys have grown tremendously. You guys, not me. I still wear the same glasses and hairstyle as I did freshman year every day, but <laughs> you guys have all had your little glow ups. We're here to celebrate your guys' tears, your sweat, the blood, quite literally the blood. I've turned in a few projects with um, my actual blood in it. Uh, Mr. Aker, I'm really sorry. The Cubo project was definitely stained with cuts from my hand that you guys have put into the past four years. I want to start off by introducing the lovely people I have up here on stage with me. So hi, my name is Jacqueline. This is my seventh year at Butcher and of course my fourth year at MMSTC. To my right, we have Dr. Catherine Newhoff, your lovely principal. <laughs> then you have Mrs. Ansel, your counselor. <laughs> and Mrs. Dewey, ex-MMSTC teacher and our guest of honor tonight. We're going to start off tonight by welcoming Mrs. Excuse me, Dr. Newhoff to the podium to share her words of wisdom. Well, good evening, everyone. It's so good to see all of you in one place at one time, three-dimensional, instead of two-dimensional on those screens. What accommodations we've had to make, haven't we? Tonight we celebrate our 29th graduating class. Woo! Compelled by the unique properties of the past 1.25 school years, shrouded in the darkness of a pandemic, I want to turn to the light and inspiration that you bring to a reflection on your four years with us at MMSTC, and for some of you, seven years at Butcher. What I'm going to talk about are a few things, such as grit, being present, belonging, and using your powers for good. What makes you successful as members of our community? Grit. In fact, grit is a critical component of all successful people. I have to pause and make note of your role models, your teachers who had to have grit to get you through this past year at a time when we were separated physically, limiting our capacity to share experiences that build connections and relationships, hallmarks of our program. When the going got tough, this group of practitioners thought about our tomorrow and dug deep to figure out how to create breakout groups virtually, how to have social hours to stay connected, and how to help individuals overcome the depth of isolation that came with this pandemic while maintaining their commitment to rigor. This winter, I read a book written by an entrepreneur named Jesse Itzler, who believed he needed a personal tune-up, so he decided to join an order of monks in New Skeet, New York. He reached out to them, and they agreed to take him on in their order for 14 days. For Jesse, his fast-paced life and continuous connections to social media and his cell phone were distracting. In joining this tiny order of monks where he experienced and then participated in personal reflection, Jesse unearthed a few powerful lessons I'll offer here. Remember the tomorrow and grit. Let me tell you a bit about Jesse. He's impulsive, and while this provides him an edge as an entrepreneur, it creates many challenges for him in his two-week stay with the new Skeet monks. He gives us an example of how he and his friends started talking one night about climbing a nearby mountain over the weekend, flooding his social media with details of his participation and preparation. Jesse's followers hung on every word. The actual weekend arrives and Jesse is stoked until the point it starts getting hard. The weather took a turn, the snow fell horizontal as winds howled all around them and Jesse's feet grew heavy in his cinder block weighted hiking boots. The group of merry men decided collectively to turn back and head down to the mountain without reaching the peak. His social media's conscience lit, lit into him. How could he quit after all that buildup? 
Stunned by his followers' responses to quitting, Jesse called the boys and scheduled another trip up that mountain that next weekend. His wife, she created Spanx out of the need for slimming, pant, no pant li panty lines on her pants one day by cutting off part of her pantyhose. That's who he's married to. His wife said, mm, dude, you get one day to get up the mountain, not a weekend, one day up and the same day back down. Jesse and his friends make it, up the, make, up, make it up that weekend. And when Jesse begins to miss his family while at New Skeet, he contemplates quitting. But then he remembers the mountain and the tomorrow that followed filled with regret. There's nothing so fatal to character as half-finished tasks. Sticking it out when the work or the task gets hard takes grit. Friends, you have grit. Turning back to Jesse's stay at New Skeet, the monks taught him many things without directly teaching him. Being present and the value of belonging to the community are two that fit our needs here. Each day, Jesse worked with a different brother in the order. One such task included washing dishes on a night when the monks had 100 guests. Jesse's first question to the teacher, teacher brother was, what's the record time for washing dishes? Jesse prided himself on doing things quickly to get through the job and on to other things. When the dishes kept coming faster than he could clean them, he stopped and asked the brother, how many more? And the answer was always the same. You only have to do one, just the one you're holding. Here, Jesse learns the importance of focus on being in the present and doing the best at that one thing at that time. Quality is more important than quantity. You are here now. Take a breath. Feel the chair beneath your seat and your feet on the ground. Take a breath and commit to memory how the air feels on your skin and smells as it is inhaled. Commit this to memory and draw upon it when you feel alone and overwhelmed. You are not alone. Sorry. You are part of a community, a community of graduates from MMSTC that numbers close to 2,000 and spans over 32 years, perhaps welded together by grit and shaped by thoughtful experience planned by your teachers. You belong to a family of graduates. Oh, I get so choked up. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to mark that membership with a challenge coin, a tradition of camaraderie that Mrs. Dewey is going to talk about in more detail. Use your powers for good. Each of you has a superpower. Some of you may even have a few. We hope that we have honed some skills within, your, with, within you during your time with us to make the world a better place for having you in it. Honesty, perseverance, integrity, prudence, charity, justice, seeking the truth through problem solving, communication, collaboration, and scholarship. We hope that you will use these powers to attempt the difficult, sail away from safe harbors to explore the world, develop wisdom through life struggle, find good, respectful role models to serve as life guides, live fully without regrets, and to create a life story with sharing about your time and place in this world. Thank you for sharing this portion of yourselves and your lives with us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Newhoff. That was beautiful. Up next, we welcome a woman who has changed my life, as I'm sure she has changed many of yours, whether it be from personal help to scholarships to applications. Mrs. Ansel is always there for us constantly, and I cannot thank her enough. So please give a warm welcome to Mrs. Ansel. Good evening. I am very proud to share this evening with such an amazing group of students. You are most definitely the best and brightest. This year, the class of 2021, all 72 strong of you, were awarded over $9 million in scholarship dollars. Seven of you received full ride scholarships. These scholarships, grants, awards, and more could not have gone to a more deserving group. 
Collectively, you represent nine separate high schools, but more importantly, you have come together to represent MMSTC. With your unique talents, personalities, and style as the class of 2021. Together, you have taken on advanced classes, presentations, research projects, arriving at school before 7 a.m., and of course, lots and lots of homework, all through a pandemic. Your accomplishments are as varied as your personalities. As future neuroscientists, educators, actuaries, anthropologists, psychologists, doctors, engineers, programmers, and more, I know our future is in good hands. Your accomplishments are as varied, I'm sorry, along with your education and experience at MMSTC, you will be taking away some sentimental memories as well. From talks of miso soup at parent-teacher conferences, unique secret Santa gifts, such as live goldfish, chicken nuggets, and a coconut, ecology club, Mr. Estapa and Mario's rap battle, dip and dots at the zoo, a unique Mad Libs rendition of the 12 days of Christmas at the ice skating party, Pi Day, the 20% project, launching and tracking a weather balloon with Mr. Supel, apple picking with Mrs. Dewey, the haunted houses, college field trips, and more. The laughter and relationships you've built with one another will last a lifetime. It is not every day that educators are rewarded with such an incredible group of young men and women to work with. We are confident that your hard work, dedication, and commitment to learning will reward you tenfold because each of you has transformed into a diamond over the past four years. As you know, the diamond begins with the most common element, carbon, or a piece of coal. Through intense heat and pressure, it transforms into a beautiful and rare gem. Over time, its value increases exponentially. If we want to be people of value, we need to be open to the heat and pressure of life and to the gifts and opportunities that these challenges provide. I am also certain that as your journey unfolds, you will continue to shine beautifully and brightly. So class of 2021, go out into the world with the gifts that you've been given and use your minds and hearts to make a difference. Great job, Mrs. Ansel. I'm now gonna ask Mr. Aker and his students to prepare and line up wherever you guys were asked to line up. Now we will go through the students and the teachers announcing their students and your guys' accomplishments and three points of pride. Hello, tonight we celebrate a milestone in your child's journey to adulthood. We, the MMSTC staff, are so honored and excited to be a part of that journey. We asked the seniors to come up with three things, as Jacqueline indicated, that they are proudest of during their time here at MMSTC, and I have my list right here. Um, it is those accomplishments that we will share with all of you, as well as where they are headed next on their journey. You will hear some amazing achievement and honors this evening and as this class is truly exceptional. Having said that, class of 2021, please hold your applause for each other until the end of the introductions. Okay, so let's begin. When your name is called, please walk to center stage and get your medal and then pose for virtual pictures. Afterwards, please quietly leave the stage and head back to your designated seating area. Now, normally I'm a hugger and I'd ask to bring it in, but tonight we'll just be doing air high fives. Uh, that'll have to do. So it is my honor to first introduce to you Thaida Med. Thaida will be graduating magna cum laude from Warren Mott High School. He will be attending Michigan State University, go green, 
where he has accepted the Michigan Competitive Scholarship and MSU Residence Scholarship. His field of studying will be engineering, and Thaid is proud of meeting the people that he did at MMSTC as he gained some super cool friends. He's proud of enduring four grueling years of projects and homework without quitting, even when he wanted to at times. He is proud of being able to learn the things that he did at MMSTC under some of his favorite teachers. Thayed really liked that his MMSTC t teachers treated him and his classmates more as equals than as students. Aw, thank you, Thayed Ahmed. <laughs> Chelsea Aiken. Chelsea will be graduating summa cum laude from Sterling Heights High School. She will attend Grand Valley State University, go Lakers, where she has been honored with the Award for Excellence in Faculty Scholarship. She plans to study biology, and she is proud of being a leader as the captain of her varsity swim team. She's proud of her strong work ethic and ability to persevere through COVID complications and for volunteering her time at Sterling Heights High School to help students in the freshman mentoring program succeed. Thank you, Chelsea. <laughs> Saima Ambia. I mean Ambia, dang it. She will be graduating from Warren Mott High School. She will attend the University of Detroit Mercy, Go Titans, where she has accepted the Ignatian Scholarship. She plans to become a physician's assistant and is very proud to have found her path and passion on her journey towards a career. She's also proud of being one of a very few to be selected and admitted into Detroit Mercy's exclusive five-year PA program and with becoming more involved in the community through volunteering at food banks and tutoring younger students. Thank you, Saima. Tazkira Amin. She will be graduating summa cum laude from Fitzgerald High School. Taz will attain Michigan, attend Michigan State University where she has accepted the Honors College State Scholarship and the Michigan Resident Scholarship. Her field of study will be social work and she is proud to be a Michigan State University social science scholar the Fitzgerald High School valedictorian and a member of the Macomb County All Academic Team. She's also proud to be a part of Focus Hope as a volunteer as she really loves this organization as her values closely align with theirs. Thank you, Taz. <laughs> Joseph Bailey. He will be graduating magna cum laude from Sterling Heights High School. He will attend Eastern Michigan University, Go Eagles, where he was awarded the Emerald Scholarship. He plans to study computer science, and Joey is proud to be a part of his National Honor Society at Sterling Heights High School for two years, and as a result, he was recommended and accepted as a member of the National Society of High School Scholars. He is proud to learn new coding languages, as this has fueled his passion for game making. He is currently working on two games, Project Butcher and Lonely Child, and he is honored that he was accepted to every college that he applied to, and also, he got a part-time job. Thank you, Joey, I hope you have an excellent evening. <laughs> Sonia Bashir. She will be graduating summa cum laude from Sterling Heights High School. Sonia will attend Wayne State University and when I went there, they were Tartars, but now, go Warriors, where she has accepted the Warrior Award and the Irving D. Reed Honors College Scholarship. She will study biological sciences, and Sonia is proud to be the 2019 American Education Week Poster Contest winner for the Warren Education Association and Warren Consolidated Schools. She is proud to have been awarded the 2019 Warren Consolidated Schools Certificate of Writing Excellence, and she also earned the certificate of rank for Ishinru Karate Black Belt. She is a first degree black belt, so watch out. Thank you, Sonia. <laughs> Jameson Battaglia. Jameson will be graduating from Lakeshore High School, 
where he will be attending Wayne State University. He will be studying business and construction management, and Jameson is proud of his involvement in athletics, specifically being a member of the varsity football team and making the varsity golf team in his very first year. He's also proud of his job in carpentry and the relationships that he has built with his classmates as some of his best friendships have come out of MMSTC. Thank you, Jameson. Aiden Bold. Aiden will be graduating summa cum laude from Lakeview High School. He will attend Oakland University, go Pioneers, if you're that old, or Golden Grizzlies, where he has been honored with the Gold Presidential Scholarship and an Athletic Swimming Scholarship. Aiden is excited to be pursuing a career in industrial engineering, and he is proud of persevering through the pandemic and continuing to excel both academically and athletically. Uh, speaking of athletics, Aiden is proud of those athletic achievements in swimming. There are far too many to name all of them, but some highlights include placing second at the state meet in both the 200 and the 500 freestyle, breaking a total of eight speed swimming records at Lakeview High School, and being named the Macomb County Swimmer of the Year not once, but two years in a row. In addition, Aiden is proud to be a member of the academic all-state team, the all-state team for swimming for Division II, and also an academic All-American. Thank you, Aiden. And now to continue our journey, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Rosemary Sabalski and the students she will be presenting to the stage. Thank you, Mr. Aker. Next, we have George Bolas from Sterling Heights High School. George will be attending Michigan State University in the fall, majoring in human biology in the pre-med track. George has earned both the Spartan Advantage and the Michigan Resident Scholarships from Michigan State. And one of George's points of pride is running varsity cross country this year for a whole season despite never having done a sport in, high, in his high school career. George is also very proud of being a freshman mentoring officer where he was able to help organize and bring freshman students to a welcoming high school environment even with the restrictions of COVID-19 in place. Lastly, George is proud to say that he has received enough scholarship money to completely cover all his expenses at MSU for four years. Congratulations, George. Delaney Bulis. Delaney comes to us from Fraser High School. This fall, she will be traveling all the way out to Arizona State University where she received their presidential scholarship to study chemical engineering. Delaney is very proud to have achieved the status of salutatorian for the class of 2021 at Fraser High School. Her second point of pride is having helped establish and be the treasurer of Fraser High School's first chapter of the Science National Honor Society. Her third point of pride is being in marching band for four years, two years as section leader and earning a varsity letter for band. Congratulations, Delaney. <laughs> Jake Cardenas from South Lake High School. Jake will be attending Michigan State University in the fall, where he will be studying engineering. Jake's first point of pride is being appointed to the St. Clair Shores Environmental Committee, where he helped the community make decisions about green opportunities and helped plan and organize community cleanup events. Jake is also proud of being successful in a whole new form of schooling during the pandemic. In fact, in this time when social distancing and quarantine made involvement beyond difficult, Jake stepped up and took on more responsibilities to keep his classmates connected, such as doing the daily virtual announcements, planning a whole new form of prom, 
and organizing many other senior activities, all while, main, all while maintaining consistent participation in varsity sports year-round. His last point of pride is becoming captain of his soccer team his senior year, meddling in several district swim, swim events and performing well in baseball all season. Jake, congratulations. Donovan Cece from Cusno High School. In the fall, Donovan will attend the University of Michigan and major in biomedical engineering. Donovan is most proud of having tied a state record for most saves in a game as a goalie for his lacrosse team and has a real opportunity to play Division I lacrosse at U of M. All this while coming off an injury that prohibited him from playing soccer his senior year. Donovan is also very proud to be graduating summa cum laude, maintaining a GPA of 4.3 throughout his high school career while playing soccer and lacrosse year-round and working four to five hours a week at his job. Last, he is also proud of how he continued to develop and strengthen relationships with his peers, teammates, and family members during the pandemic when it was so challenging to do so. Congratulations, Donovan. Landon Sereska. Landon comes to us from Lakeshore High School. This fall, Landon will attend Central Michigan University, where he received the Gold Merit Scholarship to study computer science. Landon is very proud to be the first ever champion of the MTA's Spring Fling Trap Shooting event for Lakeshore's trap team. He is also very proud of sticking through MMSTC's program, even though times were tough. Landon is also proud of earning the Black Patch, which is the highest patch from Lakeshore's snor Snowboarding Club. Landon, congratulations. <laughs> Wayne C. Chan from Fraser High School. Wayne C. will attend MSU in the fall where she received the Spartans Advantage Scholarship and the Michigan Resident Scholarship to study criminal sciences. Wainsey is most proud of being part of the first class of female Eagle Scouts in the United States. She is also proud of her HOSA, or Health Occupation Students of America's team, who placed second for regionals and third for states in the forensic science category and are now going to the international competition in June. Good luck, team. Uh, lastly, Wainsey is proud of being able to balance two varsity sports, tennis and cross country, three different schools, MMSTC, Fraser, and Derby MCC, lead a Girl Scout troop, and do many other extracurriculars throughout her high school career. Good job. Congratulations, Wainsey. <laughs> Nicole Cooks from Sterling Heights High School. In the fall, Nicole will attend Kettering University to study electrical engineering. From Kettering, she received their Merit Scholarship, their Kettering Honors Program Scholarship, and she also received a FIRST Robotics Scholarship. Nicole is very proud that she has spent seven years at Butcher starting in the sixth grade at the MS2TC and MSVPA programs and now finishing four years at MMSTC. She is also proud that she, that she was accepted at all the colleges that she applied to, which included Oakland, Michigan Tech, Michigan State, and of course Kettering. Lastly, she is very proud of already receiving an offer to work at Fanuc Robotics for her Kettering co-op this summer, starting in July. Congratulations, Nicole. Kyle Cooper from Lakeview High School. Kyle has earned the Lux Esto Merit Scholarship, which is a full ride scholarship to Kalamazoo College. He will major in biology with a minor in chemistry on the pre-med track. Kyle's three points of pride include being class president and executive president of the Board of Student Council. 
He is also very proud of conducting research at Wayne State University to detect, to detect early onset lung cancer. He is also very proud uh, of, of being appointed as the Lakeview Public Schools Board of Education student representative. Congratulations, Kyle. And now Mr. Estapa will announce the next eight students. Lucas Dembski. Lucas attends Lakeview High School. In the fall, he's going to be attending Lawrence Tech University, where he accepted the Lawrence Tech Scholarship, where he'll be studying environmental science and renewable energy. Lucas was also a participating board member of the MMSTC Ecology Club. Aiden DeStephanus. Aiden attends Sterling Heights High School. In the fall, he'll be attending Macomb Community College, where he'll be studying a program in secondary education mathematics. Aiden was Aiden's points of pride as he was drumline section leader, participating member of all of his band classes offered and stayed positive during COVID by maintaining his high academic standards and contributing to help his family get through uh, these trying times. <laughs> Eli DeServo. Eli attended Fraser High School He's going to be attending Wayne State in the fall in a program of actuary science. He accepted the Warrior Scholarship. Eli's points of pride where he was an Eagle Scout, uh, academic all-star for cross country, and the Fraser High School 2021 valedictorian. Stay up there, Aiden. <laughs> Jump to spot. Aiden Durasi. Aiden attends Warren Mott High School. In the fall, he'll be attending Kettering University, where he accepted the Presidential Scholarship, where he'll be studying mechanical engineering. Aiden is a four-year football team member, honorable mention for the Congressional AMP Challenge, and completed six AP courses in his high school career. <laughs> Tia Elias. Tia has attended Cusno High School. In the fall, she'll be attending Purdue University where she accepted the Purdue Scholarship. She's also accepted into the Purdue Honors College where she'll be studying political science and international relations. Tia is proud of her work, work ethic gains over the past four years. She participated in the Marinette Youth Organization as a treasurer and their social media coordinator. And then she's proud to complete the Global Youth Leadership Conference this year. Thank you, Tia. <laughs> Nolan Ellis. Nolan attended Fraser High School, and in the fall, he'll be attending Grand Valley State University, where he accepted the Laker Scholarship. His, study of, his field of study will be electrical engineering. Nolan is proud that he made significant strides to move out of his comfort zone and succeed academically as well as socially. Making friends with so many like-minded individuals with similar life goals, and he made significant strides to improve his overall public presentation skills over the past four years. Thank you, Nolan. <laughs> Brendan Evert.
Brendan attends Sterling Heights High School. In the fall, he'll be attending Hope College, accepting the trustee scholarship, and his field of study will be actuarial science. Brennan's points of pride, he had a third place finish in the National Invest Right competition. That's the national level. All state academic for baseball, and all state honorable mention varsity tennis, as well as the Macomb County Dream Team member. <laughs> Joshua Fair. Joshua attended Warren Mott's, Warren, Warren Woods Tower High School. He will be attending Western Michigan University in the fall, where he accepted the Western University, Michigan University Achievement Award. His field of study will be aerospace engineering. Joshua's points of pride is that he successfully completed the MMSDC rigorous program. He's a recipient of the Western Michigan Scholarship, and it's nearly a full-ride tuition, and he developed and improved his personal and academic character over the past four years. Okay, next up I'd like to introduce Kimberly Gravel. Thank you, Mr. Ostapa. First up, we have Leslie Fanton. Leslie comes to us from Fraser High School. In the fall, Leslie is attending Michigan State University where she earned the Spartan Advantage Scholarship. At Michigan State, she plans to study human biology in the pre-med track. Leslie's first point of pride is being part of the Fraser Varsity Gymnastics team where she earned a varsity letter all four years, most improved honors, and was named the MVP this season. Another accomplishment Leslie is proud of is getting to be part of HOSA, where they earned second place honors in regionals, third place in states, and moved on to internationals. Leslie's third point of pride is her membership and service in leadership organizations, including the National Honor Society, the Science National Honor Society, and the Tri-M Music Honor Society. Congratulations, Leslie. <laughs> Callan Fields. Callan comes to us from Lakeshore High School. Oops, I forgot about this. Oh, good. Oh, nice. Okay, Callan comes to us from Lakeshore High School. In the fall, Callan will be attending the University of Michigan, where he earned the U of M Hale High Achieving Involved Leader Scholarship for Academic Excellence and Leadership. At U of M, Callan plans to study computer engineering. Callan's first point of pride is that he was the three-year drum major of the Lakeshore High School Marching Band. Another accomplishment Kellen is proud of is that he is the valedictorian of the Lakeshore graduating class with a GPA of 4.24. Kellen's third point of pride is that he won Channel 7's Brightest and Best, which recognizes academic achievements throughout Metro Detroit. Congratulations, Kellen. Lorna Flochi. Lorna comes to us from Sterling Heights High School. In the fall, Lorna is attending Oakland University where she earned the Distinguished Scholar Award for Academic Excellence and Test Scores. At this point, her area of study is undecided. Lorna's first point of pride is being a semifinalist for the First Robotics 2020 Dean's List Award, which is awarded to students who show exceptional leadership. Lorna is also proud of being the section leader and center snare of the Sterling Heights High School Marching Band. Lorna's third point of pride is serving as First Robotic Team 818's logistics sub-team lead, where she worked on write-ups, logos, and advertising for the team. Congratulations, Lorna. <laughs> Vanessa Francis. Vanessa comes to us from Sterling Heights High School. In the fall, she is planning to study biology in the pre-med track at the University of Michigan. 
At the University of Michigan, Vanessa was awarded the U of M Hale High Achieving Involved Leader Scholarship and the Regents Merit Scholarship for Academic Excellence and Test Scores. Vanessa's first point of pride is that she is graduating with a 4.6 grade point average, earning her a salutatorian honors. Vanessa is also proud of being selected for the prestigious Michigan Youth Leadership Conference at Michigan State University, where she was able to develop and improve her leadership skills. Vanessa's third point of pride is receiving the College Board AP Scholar with Honor Award during her junior year when she earned fours and fives on four AP exams. Congratulations, Vanessa. <laughs> Joshua Frazier. Joshua comes to us from Cousineau High School. In the fall, he will be attending Michigan Technological University where he was awarded the Presidential Platinum Scholarship for Academic Excellence. At Michigan Tech, Joshua plans to study mechatronics which is a new degree combining electrical, mechanical, and computer engineering. Josh's first point of pride is playing first singles in tennis at Cousineau High School. He is also proud of getting fours on the AP stats exam. Joshua's third point of pride is graduating with a 4.34 GPA, ranking him among the top 20 students in his class. Congratulations, Josh. Jenna Gayaton. Jenna comes to us from Warren Mott High School. In the fall, Jenna will be attending the Illinois Institute of Technology where she earned the Henry T. Held Scholarship. Jenna will be majoring in science, technology, and society. This year, Jenna was honored by receiving the Legacy Award at Warren Mott High School for her focus and dedication to her school. Jenna is also proud that she played on the Nationals 03 Union Travel Soccer Team and was recruited to play college soccer. Jenna's third point of pride is maintaining a grade point average of a 4.2 or higher during all four years of her high school career. Congratulations, Jenna. <laughs> Justice Glasgow. Justice comes to us from Warren Woods Tower High School. In the fall, Justice will be attending Southern Connecticut State University, where she earned the trustee scholarship, the Great Lakes Triton Care Scholarship, and she committed to the Southern Connecticut swim team. Justice plans to study biology. Justice is proud that she plays sixth in the Michigan Division II state meet in the 100-yard butterfly during the 2021 girls' swim season. Justice also served as the clarinet section leader at Tower during the marching band and concert band seasons. Justice's third point of pride is that she helped organize and run a bike giveaway through PR Kids that allowed children in low-income and foster homes to have an awesome gift during the holiday season. Congratulations, Justice. Leah Goodell. Leah comes to us from Fraser High School. In the fall, Leah will be attending the University of Texas in Arlington, where she earned the Maverick Academic Scholarship, coupled with being awarded the non-residential tuition differential waiver. At UTA, Leah plans to study architectural engineering. Leah's first point of pride is earning the Academic Scholar Award two years in a row for her high GPA and involvement with softball. Leah is also proud of her volunteering with the National Honor Society through organizations like PAWS, which is a shelter and rehab facility for cats, and McCrest, which is a homeless shelter where she packed to-go bags for people in need. Leah's third point of pride is being a member of the Fraser Marching Band for four years where she earned section leader of the flutes. Congratulations, Leah. 
And now I'd like to invite Mrs. Hilliard up to the podium. All right, I have the honor of starting off my students with Colin Gregerson. Colin attends Warren Woods High School. Next year, he will be attending the University of Michigan, where he has been awarded the Hale Scholarship. Colin is going to be studying ecology, and he is most proud of being on the varsity swim and tennis team for all four years. He's also very proud of earning his Eagle Scout, which is the highest rank attainable in the Boy Scout organization. And he's also very proud of having all A's through high school. Congratulations, Colin. <laughs> Ms. Mia Han. Mia attends Lakeshore High School. Next year, she'll be attending Michigan State University, go green. She'll be studying plant biology. She is most proud of her four, being a four-year member of the Lakeshore Varsity Cheer Team, being a member of Girl Scouts of Southeastern Michigan since 2008, and being editor-in-chief of the Lakeshore student newspaper, The Shoreline. Congratulations, Miss Mia. <laughs> Next, we'd like to honor Rizwan Hader. Rizwan attends Warren Mott High School. Next year, he'll be attending University of Michigan, where, he'll be, uh, where he was awarded the Hale Scholarship. He'll be studying mechanical engineering. He's most proud of being a 2021 Macomb County all-academic student, being part of the Varsity Science Olympiad for two years, and he was a volunteer at his lo local mosque and for National Honor Society. Congratulations, Rizwan. Next up, we're going to honor Ms. Jamie Jacob. Jamie attends Lakeshore High School. Next year, she'll be attend or this year, she'll be attending University of Michigan, where she has been awarded the Regent Merit Scholarship. She'll be studying environmental sciences. She's most proud of being captain of the varsity soccer team at Lakeshore High School. She's also proud of um, being the Lakeshore High School salutatorian and a member of the all-county academic team. Congratulations, Jamie. Ms. Avery Camrazel. Avery attends Lakeshore High School. Next year, she will attend Michigan State University, where she will study nursing and English. She's most proud of being a low brass section leader for Lakeshore High School marching band. And over the course of her four years at Michigan MMSTC, she's held three jobs, including cart jockey, waitress, and piano teacher. Avery is proud of her accomplishments for scoring a four on AP stats and a five on AP language exams. Congratulations, Avery. Adriana Kelly. Adriana attends Fraser High School. Next year, she will attend the University of Michigan, where she has been awarded the Kessler Presidential Scholarship. She will be studying elementary education while she's there. She is most proud of scoring a 1420 on the SAT and placing in the 98th percentile and maintained a 3.9 weighted GPA throughout high school. 
She's also proud of being the secretary and the founding e-board member for Fraser High School's Science National Honor Society. She's also proud of participating in National Honor Society, Science National Honor Society, Triumph Music Honor Society, Fraser Band, Fraser High School Color Guard, Fraser Performing Arts Career Academy, and Melodies of Metro Detroit, as well as Fraser Singers. Congratulations, Adriana. <laughs> Mr. Isha Khan. Isha attends Cousineau High School. Next year, he will attend the University of Michigan, where he has been awarded the Alvin M. and Avriella D. Bentley Scholarship, the LSNA Dean Scholarship, as well as the Hale Scholarship. While he's at the University of Michigan, he'll be studying public policy. He's most proud of getting a full ride to college and taking that burden and worry off his parents' back, which has been, always been a goal since he was a child. He was a two-year captain and three-year driver for the Steel Armadillos Robotic Team 818. He really enjoyed driving and doing his best for the team. He's also proud of winning his first match of wrestling. People bet he would quit, and if anyone knows Isha, they know he didn't. Even after losing matches all season, he finally won at his last tournament and got third place. And we'll always remember as the president. So congratulations, Isha. And last but not least, Mr. Alex Kovacs. Alex attends Sterling Heights High School. He will be attending Wayne State University where he ha has been awarded the Warrior Scholarship, the Honors College Dean's Award, and a Music Scholarship. He'll be obviously studying music and education and technology. His three points of pride include being a 2020 Michigan All-State Honors Band participant on the trombone, Michigan All-Academic for Cross Country and Track and Field, as well as a 1410 on the SAT. Congratulations, Alex. <laughs> Next up is Mr. May. Up first, I have Sebastian Kuka. Sebastian is a graduate of Warren Mott High School. He plans to pursue a degree in software engineering this fall at the University of Michigan Dearborn on the UM Dearborn grant. Sebastian achieved a longtime goal with his acceptance, acceptance to U of M Dearborn and is also extremely proud to have attended classes at Butcher for the past seven years as a student at the Middle School Math and Science Technology Center prior to being accepted at MMSTC. In addition, Sebastian earned a spot in Warren Mott's jazz band despite not receiving any prior formal instruction. Best of luck, Sebastian. <laughs> Nicholas Lang. Nicholas Lang comes to us from Cusno High School. He is a proud Eagle Scout, has earned two medals running varsity track the past two years at Cusno High School, and will be graduating with high honors. This fall, Nicholas will be attending Michigan State University with a focus on chemical engineering as well as computer science. Good luck, Nick. Jason Lee. Jason is graduating from Warren Mott High School and will use the Presidential Scholarship as he pursues engineering at Kettering University. Jason is proud of his involvement in hosting a gaming club during his tenure at MMSTC, the strength of the friendships that he developed during his time here, and graduating within the top 3% of this year's class at Warren Mott High School. Congratulations, Jason.
Teresa Lee. Coming to us from Sterling Heights High School is Teresa Lee. Among her accolades, Teresa includes redeveloping the front ensemble of the Sterling Heights High School Marching Band, an ensemble that had been missing for a handful of years prior. She learned that leadership could come from within and your will to improve can guide that change. Teresa reached level seven for the Michigan Music Teachers Association Student Achievement Test for Piano receiving multiple trophies, honors, and awards over a 13-year period of test trials and performance. Just this year, Teresa launched a podcast with classmates creating, producing, filming, and editing over 14 hours of content touching on political and social issues. Good luck, Teresa, in everything you do. <laughs> Tyler Lemager. Tyler comes to us from Fraser High School. Tyler shares his pride in his ability to play 14 different musical instruments, half of which are self-taught. Growth through the years allowed Tyler to participate in AP English Language and Composition, despite having to receive additional language support early in his education. Tyler's also proud of being recognized by his classmates for his FST Clock Project sophomore year. This fall, Tyler will attend Michigan State University to study psychology and is considering a music minor as well as musical therapy. Congratulations, Tyler. <laughs> Nabil Mahdi. Nabil is a graduate of Warren Mott High School. This fall, Nabil will be attending the University of Michigan on the Hale and Hellsberg Scholarships and studying finance. Nabil's accomplishments through the years includes a recognition for a top regional submission in the 2019 Congressional App Challenge and becoming the youngest tutor at his place of employment. Nabil was offered a position after initially going to receive instruction and was recognized by the center with a job offer. Throughout his high school career, Nabil completed six AP courses while remaining active in multiple extracurricular activities, including NHS, Key Club, Tutoring, and Science Olympiad. Congratulations, Nabil. <laughs> Chloe Mainhart. Chloe is a graduate of Lakeshore High School. She will be studying zoology this fall in East Lansing at Michigan State University. Chloe is proud of achieving her goal and being accepted to MSU with over $4,000 in grants and scholarships, a goal she has had for as long as she can remember. Chloe celebrates how she persevered through the, the, through the four challenging years at MMSTC and overcame all the obstacles that came her way. Great pride is also shown by Chloe in her years as a Girl Scout, and membership in Lakeshore's National Honor Society, Student Congress, and HOSA Club. Best of luck, Chloe. <laughs> Ethan Mason. Ethan graduates this year from Fraser High School. He's a National Cyber Scholarship semifinalist in 2021 and took a leadership role the past four years at Fraser High School with the Cyber Patriot Competition, an Air Force-sponsored program to encourage students in STEM disciplines with a focus on cybersecurity. His coding was put on display in 2019 when he wrote the Java code for the first robotics competition, Team 818's drivetrain. Next fall, Ethan will continue his pursuit of computer science at Kettering University, where he will attend on the Provost Scholarship. Congratulations, Ethan. Please welcome Mr. Greg McMillan. Ethan Mansour. Ethan attends Warren Woods Tower. 
He is very proud of his ability to manage his academics while working and playing sports. He is ranked third on the Warren Woods Tower tennis team. In 2019, he backpacked 32 miles along Lake Superior, along the Lake Superior Trail near Munising, Michigan. He will be attending Michigan State University, where he's accepted the residence scholarship, and he will be studying computer engineering. Adam Meyer. Adam attends Fraser High School. He has received all A's his entire academic career. In addition to being part of Quiz Bowl, the Scientific National Honor Society, he has volunteered at the St. Clair Shores Ice Arena, has played club soccer, and is treasurer of the Fraser National Honor Society. He is also very proud of being the first student, first Fraser student to medal at Decca Nationals for Fraser High School. He will be attending Kettering University, where he has accepted the Presidential Scholarship, the Honor Scholars College Scholarship, and a Decca Scholarship. And he will study mechanical engineering. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> Genevieve Myers. Genevieve attends Sterling Heights High School. She is ranked number one in her class at Sterling Heights High School. She has been a four-year varsity athlete in soccer, cross country, and she has held leadership positions in robotics, National Honor Society, and marching band. In 2017, she started her own business selling resin jewelry and real four-leaf clovers, that has been a business that has been featured on the news four times. You can find it on Facebook. She will attend Michigan Technological University. She is the winner of the MTU Leading Scholarship Award, and she will study engineering. <laughs> Emma Nake was not able to be with us tonight, but Emma attends Lakeshore High School, and she was very proud to be accepted into the MMSTC family four years ago. She has been part of the MMSTC yearbook team, and she is a member of the Lakeshore Varsity Swim Team. Emma will attend the University of Michigan in Dearborn, where she has accepted the Hale Scholarship and will study environmental science. <laughs> James Nyman. James attends Lakeshore High School. He is a member of the National Honor Society, and he is a Lakeshore Marching Band Section Leader. He is an honorable mention in the 2019 Congressional App Challenge. He will be attending Michigan State University, where he has accepted the MSU Michigan Resident Scholarship and a Merit Scholarship, and he will study actuarial science. <laughs> Avery Partlow. Avery attends Lakeshore High School. She is third in her class at Lakeshore High School. She is a member of the NHS, Student Congress, and Art Club. She will be graduating with a 4.17 GPA. She will attend Michigan State University, where she has accepted the Michigan Residence Scholarship, and she has been accepted into the Michigan State's College of Engineering, where she will study environmental engineering. Nicholas Pierce. Nick is very proud of his perseverance and determination that it took to be successful at MMSTC. He has been a starting receiver on the Cousinal football team, and he has been named to the MAC All Academic Football Team for four consecutive years. He will be attending Michigan Technological University, where he has accepted the Presidential Silver Scholarship and the University Student Award, and he will study engineering. <laughs> Adiba Rahman.
Adiba attends Warren Mott High School. She has participated in many com community service projects, some through NHS and through the Marauder Ambassador Program. She has raised monies to support single mothers struggling in her area during the pandemic, and she is very proud of her be journey, beginning at the age of three as an ES ESL student, to graduating from MMSTC with honors and several awards. She will be attending Lyman Briggs at, the, at Michigan State University, where she has accepted the Spartan Achievement Scholarship, Michigan Resident Scholarship, and she will major in human biology with a focus on pre-pharmacy. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Moore. Isabella Rinaldi. Isabella is graduating from Cusno High School. She plans to attend Michigan State University where she plans to study neuroscience and biochemistry as double majors. She's a varsity dance team member and a studio dancer at Encore the Dance Center. She proudly has a GPA of 4.5 and is proud of all of her achievements while attending MMSTC. Congratulations, Isabella. <laughs> Luke Sanders. Luke is graduating from Fitzgerald High School. He is attending the University of Michigan, where he is the recipient of the Go Blue Grant and the University of Michigan Grant. He plans to study computer science. Luke was a four-year member of the boys' varsity soccer team, serving as captain his senior year. He also was the captain of the Fitzgerald FRC robotics team and the captain of the Fitzgerald Coders cyber robotics team. Congratulations, Luke. John Schultz. John is graduating from Sterling Heights High School. He plans to attend Central Michigan University where he is the recipient of the Merit Scholarship. He intends to study statistics. John was the drum, has received his drum major first class certification, was a four year cross country team member, and has accumulated over 100 volunteer hours. Congratulations, John. Maggie Simons. Maggie is graduating from Cusno High School. She is attending Kettering University, where she has received the Presidential Scholarship, Robotics Scholarship, and Honors Program Scholarship. She is studying Chemical Engineering. Maggie was accepted into the Honors Program at Kettering University. She is learning Japanese quickly and making substantial progress. She has also excelled at Butcher for the last seven years. Congratulations, Maggie. Tyler Skripchak. Tyler is graduating from Warnwoods Tower High School. He is attending the University of Michigan where he is a recipient of the Regents Merit Scholarship. He plans to study chemical engineering. Tyler is the valedictorian at Warnwoods Tower High School. He is proud of his admission into the University of Michigan. He is the All-State Honorable Mention and MAC Gold Division MVP for soccer. Congratulations, Tyler. <laughs> Michaela Squire.
Michaela is graduating from Lakeview High School. She is attending Northern Michigan University where she has received the American Red Cross High School Scholarship and the Northern Michigan University Merit Scholarship. She plans to study secondary education with a French major. Michaela is the Student Council Executive Board Vice President and the Lakeview High School Class of 2021 Vice President. She was invited to perform with the Honors Performance Series Women's Choir at Carnegie Hall her sophomore year. She also discovered her passion for education through coming out of her shell as a leader and embracing her interests. Congratulations, Michaela. Ella Stamatakis. Ella is graduating from Lakeshore High School. She is attending Michigan State University where she is a recipient of the State Scholar Plus and Michigan Residency Scholarship. She plans to study astrophysics. Ella has, mul has had multiple pieces entered in different art shows. She achieved a $100,000 scholarship and she is in the process of creating an art business. Congratulations, Ella. <laughs> Sam Sturr. Sam is graduating from Warren Mott High School. He is attending the University of Michigan where he plans to study computer engineering. Sam is the co-organizer of the Butcher Super Smash Brothers Tournament over the last four years. He is graduating summa cum laude at Warren Mott High School. He was awarded the City of Warren's Outstanding Volunteer Award in 2018 for his work in the Warren Historical Society. Congratulations, Sam. Presenting the rest of the class of 2021, Mrs. Chris Tallman. Wesley Swigart. Wesley comes to us from Cusno High School. In the fall, he will be attending Central Michigan University, where he was awarded the Maroon and Gold Merit Recognition Scholarship. He will be studying advertising. Wesley is proud of his achievements in personal writing and film projects. He is also proud of his family. He has had two close members battle cancer in the past four years. Most of his family has had surgery at some point that they've worked back from and become stronger. He is grateful for everyone in MMSTC that he's had the privilege of knowing for the past four years. He says, you are all amazing people. Congratulations, Wesley. <laughs> Mario Thachi. Mario comes to us from Sterling Heights High School. In the fall, he will be attending the University of Michigan, where he was awarded the Hale Scholarship. He plans to study in two areas. He wants a major in political science with a minor in international relations and public policy. Mario was accepted as a paid intern for U.S. Congresswoman Lisa McLean for the summer of 2021 in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Capitol Building. He was president of the Sterling Heights High School National Honor Society and he has been a section leader for the past two years for the alto saxophone shelter section at Sterling Heights High School. Congratulations, Mario. <laughs> Evan Terrell. Evan comes to us from Lakeview High School. In the fall, he will be attending Michigan Technological University, where he will major in electrical engineering. He was awarded the Platinum Level Presidential Scholars Award, as well as a leadership scholarship. Evan was a member of Lakeview's National Honor Society and Mu Alpha Theta. 
He earned an academic gold bar for his outstanding GPA and SAT scores. And he has completed 12 Wayne State University credits with a 4.0 GPA. Congratulations, Evan. <laughs> Ian Waite. Hang on one second. Ian cannot be with us tonight, but he comes to us from Cosno High School. In the fall, he will be attending Michigan Technological University, where he was awarded the Platinum Level Presidential Scholars Award. He will be studying electrical engineering. Ian is proud of his role as the narrator in MSVPA's production of Civil War Voices. He is proud of his first job as an apprentice machinist, and Ian makes a weekly cooking show for the Warren Cinematic YouTube channel. Congratulations, Ian. Abby Wallace. Abby will graduate from Fraser High School. In the fall, she will attend St. Francis University, where she was awarded the Presidential Scholarship and the St. Ronald's Men's Club Scholarship for service to the church. She will be in a five-year physician assistant program. Abby earned a varsity letter for athletics, music, and theater. She has been an altar server and has volunteered at her church since the second grade. And she is proud that, quote, through all the ups and downs of having one arm, eight fingers, one leg, and a swollen brain, I've still managed to graduate summa cum laude. Congratulations, Abby. <laughs> Max Wetstein. Max comes to us from Fraser High School and will be attending Macomb Community College in the fall, having earned the Goodfellow Scholarship for Community Service. Future plans are to study high school education, Spanish, and mathematics. Math was, Max was captain of cross country for two years, is a karate black belt level two, and has been volunteering for the Fraser Goodfellows, distributing food for people in need around Christmas for the past eight years. Congratulations, Max. Jacqueline Rubel. Jacqueline comes to us from Cusno High School. In the fall, she'll be attending the University of Michigan, where she was awarded the Hale Scholarship. She will be a psychology major with a music and drama minor. She will graduate valedictorian of Cusno's class of 2021 with a 4.685 GPA. She has been in over 25 plays and musicals. In the senior show, she will be playing Anna in Frozen. And she is proud that she navigated through the college process as a first generation college student. Congratulations, Jacqueline. <laughs> Alex Yang. Alex comes to us from Cousineau High School. In the fall, he will be attending Kettering University, where he was awarded the Provost Scholarship. He plans to study mechanical engineering. He is proud of having spent three years at tennis, two years in choir, and he is glad to meet such good people throughout his high school years. Congratulations, Alex. This concludes our presentation of the class of 2021. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you so much, teachers, and of course, congratulations, students. I now welcome one of the gems of MMSTC. I've had the pleasure of knowing Mrs. Dewey uh, since my freshman year, technically, but I had her my sophomore year, and if you guys don't know her at home, you're really missing out. I've never met someone more compassionate and steadfast. My first memory with Mrs. Dewey, this is a true story, was punching her in the face during sophomore camp. 
Despite that, I used to stay after school every day and she would invite me into her room and just talk or help with homework and anything. It's so great to see her back. Please welcome her to the stand. I had forgotten all about that. All right, let's see if we get this to work. Is it me or you? There we go. Hello, my wonderful students. This is Mrs. Dewey. Today, we're here to talk about section 13.1, to infinity and beyond. For those of you at home, that's how I started all of my screencasts in FSD. Couldn't resist. I am honored to be your guest speaker at Senior Honors Night. Even though your life, all our lives, have taken some unexpected twists and turns over the last 15 months, I am blessed to have the opportunity to share some thoughts with you as you embark on the next segment of this journey called life. In preparing for this speech, I posted in the MMSTC alumni group on Facebook, a group about 800 strong, which you can now join. I ask them for words of encouragement to pass along to your class. I shall share these with you electronically, but I have chosen one to read here tonight. From Christopher Allen Hopper, MMSTC Lands Cruise North, class of 2009, studied linguistics and pre-med at Harvard University, and is a graduate of the Wayne State University's School of Medicine. He says, through all the challenges you have faced, you have shown resilience. Through all the hard work you have put in, you have earned your place amongst the alumni. Keep achieving and broadening your horizons in order to better write your story into the interwoven tapestry that is our shared, connected story. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Speaking of challenges, I've always, since I've always advised you to visualize, not memorize, I'm going to use your challenge coin to frame my talk. So you might want to take it out. What exactly is a challenge coin? A challenge coin is a specially designed coin given to someone to confirm membership in an organization as well as to honor an achievement. The history of challenge coins lies within the military. During the Roman Empire, soldiers were rewarded by presenting them with a coin to recognize their achievements. During World War I, a common story revolves around a soldier whose unit commander had given all members a special bronze medallion. This young pilot was shot down behind enemy lines in France, and he was captured. The German patrol took all of his identification except the medallion that he kept in a leather pouch around his neck. During a bombardment in the middle of the night, he managed to escape, cross no man's land, and stumbled into a French outpost. The officers there thought he was a spy and wanted to execute him. So the pilot pulled out his coin and proved his identity. So the French gave him a bottle of wine and helped him rejoin his unit. From there, use of the coin spread. Soldiers often challenged others to prove they were part of a unit by asking them to produce the coin. When Dr. Newhoff became the director of special programs, she brought the tradition of challenge coins to MMSTC. The coin symbolizes your achievement in completing the four-year MMSTC program and marks your membership in the MMSTC alumni family. Some alumni keep these coins in a special place with other high school mementos. Others actually carry these coins with them regularly as a reminder of the effort and work they are capable of and their membership in the MMSTC family. I am suggesting an additional way to look at this coin, and we'll focus on the equilateral triangle of our logo and the encompassing circle. Commitment. When you started MMSTC, you made a four-year commitment to completing this program. This commitment wasn't always easy to keep, and, and perhaps there were times when you wanted to chuck it all in and go back to your homeschool full-time. Full but you did it, and here you are. You also committed to work in a variety of teams, whether for research, project partners, labs in class, or the numerous variety of group projects along the way. As you continue your life journey, let this leg of the triangle remind you that one, you are capable of committing to something that can be difficult, takes time to realize, and requires growth along the way, and that two, 
Commitment is what makes the difference between a vague desire for a goal and the dedication needed to actually achieve that goal. Feelings are fickle, as changeable as Michigan's weather. As said by American entrepreneur, author, and speaker Jim Rohn, motivation is what gets you started. Commitment is what keeps you going. Communication. Whether it be in writing research papers, lab reports, or project write-ups, or in giving presentations big and small, communication has been an extremely important component of the MMSTC curriculum. It includes not only formal presentations, but also those informal situations when you're talking with pod mates or group members or teachers. Take these skills with you as you embark on the next phase of your journey. Not only use what you have learned here, but deepen and widen these skills as you apply them to college, work, social, and personal relationships. Whether you communicate face-to-face, -face, virtually, in writing, or in images, Strive to understand as well as be understood. To listen with your eyes and your ears and your heart as well as talk with words and with images. Lack of and miscommunication is a huge issue, both in in-person and online environments. Communication takes deliberate effort, especially in interpersonal relationships. Remember the importance of communication as your world widens and use these tools to hear and to be heard. Connections, the third leg of our triangle. At MMSTC, you've made connections between math and science, between graphs and equations, between an experimental treatment and response, just to name a few. But you've also made connections between classmates, people you may never have gotten the opportunity to know if not for MMSTC. You forged those connections in good times and not so good times. You've celebrated successes with others. You've commiserated over academic and personal trials. You've disclosed personal challenges and sorrows. These experiences have built bonds that no one can disassemble. You've heard about the MMSTC family since before you arrived as a freshman. The Instagram posts on at MMSTC Inspires celebrating the class of 2021 often references this family and your answers to the questions regarding your favorite memories and what you like best about MMSTC. The connections we make with others are like an invisible spider web that you make with other people that not only connects but supports you and each other. You are now joining roughly 2,000 fellow alumni, and I encourage you to not only keep in contact with your classmates as you venture out, but to connect with fellow alumni as well. It is a network that has come together to support each other for advice, job searches, celebrating accomplishments and personal joys, sharing sorrows, friends givings gatherings, and even voting for Mr. Estapa's son for goal of the year which really helped put them over the top, I think. I encourage you as well to seek out new connections to people, to family, to faith. Build new networks and new groups of people to integrate into your life. Build your web of support and support others. Author Victoria Erickson says, when connections are real, they simply never die. They can be buried or ignored or walked away from but never broken. If you've deeply resonated with another person or place, the connection remains, despite distance, time, situation, lack of presence, circumstance, real connections live on forever. The circle that surrounds the MMSTC triangular logo is a symbol as well. For what is commitment, communication, and connection without compassion? I've seen your compassion within and outside of the classroom so often. Whether for a cause you believe in or in, for individuals, your compassion is expressed in so many different ways. A listening ear, a call to action, a laugh, a hug, an act of service. Underneath it is all that sense of caring for others. Please take that same passion 
and apply it to the world at large. Be kind. Be caring. Be compassionate. Have compassion for friends, for family, for your fellow human beings, no matter how different they are from you, for this earth, for this universe, and for yourself. Yes, do not forget to have compassion for yourself. With compassion as a focus, you will not only achieve great goals, solve great problems, make great gains, but hashtag use your powers for good. So, whenever you look at the challenge coin, think about commitment, communication, connection, and compassion. Whether you are off to college or the military or other technical training, use these skills and these qualities. They will serve you well. They will also serve you well as you continue past your academic journey to further professional and per personal adventures to infinity and beyond. Live long and prosper, my wonderful students, my friends. God bless. Wow, <laughs> um, beautiful job, Mrs. Dewey. So, of course, commencement, honors night, senior dinner, that's not really senior dinner, whatever you wanna call it. It's a celebration of the graduating seniors, and I feel like all of these celebrations focus on you guys, but we don't take time to truly look past, I guess, here, the audience, and back into the camera of the people at home, the reason we're here. Because I have the opportunity and I'm up here, I'd like to take this time to personally thank my parents, Brian and Alicia Rubel. I know you're back home. I would never call you that. Please don't beat me with the chancla. <laughs> um, uh, as many of you know, my parents, uh, neither of them went to college, so I'm a first-generation student. And it was a very difficult process, and I'm sure many of you know the trying times I've had at home. They have been there the entire time, supporting me, driving me, paying for everything, and I couldn't thank them enough, and I love them and I'm sure many of you guys feel the same way about your parents. So now we will present a video made by the class of 2021 for you guys back at home. Thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you for everything you have given me and thank you for helping me to become the person that I am today. I would not be me without you. I just want to say a big, big, big thank you to all the support you've shown me throughout life and especially these past few years. Love you guys. Hello, my name is Saima and I'd like to thank my parents and my teachers for all of their love and support. Hi, my name is Adam Ryan and I would just like to thank my parents for always pushing me to be the best person I can be and always supporting me throughout my life. I just wanted to thank you guys for giving me so much freedom with my education. It means a lot that you trust me to like choose my own classes and decide what I want to go into. So I just really enjoyed having that freedom and that trust to choose what's going to be right for me. When I first saw that I was getting to with them, I was ecstatic. And then I looked at their projected costs and I was heartbroken. I thought it would be too much and I was ready to give up. But Mom, Dad, you guys were willing to sit down with me find a way to make it work, even if it was going to be a little bit hard. So thank you. Thanks to you, I get to go to my dream college. And I appreciate it so much more than I can say. It means the world to me. Thank you. Go ahead and give your parents at home a round of applause. So speaking of thanks, uh, one of the many things that parents do for us is help provide financial need for college, because let's be honest, it's really expensive. So the least that we can do as students is try to get scholarships. I now present a video presentation from the MMSTC alumni panel presenting the winners of the scholarship they gave this year. Take it away, virtual Mr. K. Hello, class of 2021. My name is Ryan Kaput, and I graduated from MMSTC and Sterling Heights High School as part of the class of 2008. 
I'm currently serving as the treasurer of the recently formed MMSTC Alumni Association, and on behalf of the association, I want to recognize all of you for making it to where you are today. Over the past four years, you've pushed yourselves and developed skills that will serve you well into your future, and you've created bonds that I hope will last a long time. This year, we are awarding our first annual MMSTC Alumni Association Scholarship, funded by generous donations from MMSTC alumni, former staff, and friends of our community. I'd like to sincerely thank all of our donors and everyone who contributed their efforts to making this scholarship possible. With that said, congratulations to our scholarship recipients and congratulations to the class of 2021. Welcome to the MMSTC alumni community. I now welcome Mr. May to the podium. As an alumni of MMSTC, I'm honored that I got the chance this year to present the checks to these recipients. When I call your name, please come up and accept your check and wait for the rest of us to be presented. Rizwan Hader, Warren Mott High School. Adam Meyer, Fraser High School. <laughs> Wayne C. Chan, Fraser High School. <laughs> Mario Taki, Sterling Heights High School. Saima Ambia, Warren Mott High School. And Jacqueline Rubel, Cosno High School. On behalf of the Alumni Association, congratulations to the 2021 and inaugural recipients. And Jacqueline. Congratulations to the winners. You guys can all be seated now. One more round of applause for them. All right, guys, we're nearing the end of the night. So I guess for the last time in my MMSTC career, my name is Jacqueline Rubel, and my home school is Cusno. When asked to describe MMSTC, I've always struggled. It seems like the best answer I could muster was different. So you go to a smart school half the day. Yeah, but it's, it's different. So you just take AP classes for half the day? Yeah, but it's different. So you just go to college for half the day? It's different. It's different in the way that we have an entire spirit week revolving around Pi Day. It's different in the way that the Sterling boys show each other their stomachs during calculus class and no one questions it anymore. <laughs> it's different in the way that when we first walked into MMSTC, our first icebreaker was a question that was how many jelly beans will fit into a certain model of an airplane? Answering different to describing MMSTC kind of bit me in the butt because when I walked out and said to the universe, can I please have a senior year? The universe said back to me, yeah, but it's gonna be different. We should have all expected the pandemic to hit a senior year. I mean, ever since freshman year, we've been saying, I don't wanna start calculus at 6.40 in the morning. And if I have to take senior research and AP classes at the same time, I'm gonna lose my mind. 
whatever higher power you believe in, God, Allah, the Green Brothers, they heard our prayers and they answered. So now instead of starting calculus at 6.40 in the morning, we start calculus at 6.56 in the morning through WebEx. That means I wake up at 6.50 in the morning, 6.54 if it's a really bad day, roll over and log into WebEx and wonder, why am I doing this? I'm sure that's a question that many of you have had too, and don't lie to me, I've heard every single one of you threaten to drop out at one point or another. But why are we doing this? Our friends at our home schools get to hang out with their peers every single day, are done with homework after an hour, and get to look at their notes three minutes before tests and pass with straight A's. While we have to write 50-page papers on linear thermal expansion, peel hot glue burns off of our hands after building a tower, and study for three to four tests and quizzes a week from three freaking classes. It's stressful, guys. And especially this year, I kept wondering, why am I doing this? At the beginning of the year, none of us expected to get a prom or graduation or even to physically walk across the stage. And yet we did everything anyways. So why did we all do it? It's because MMSTC is different. And that different makes the difference. While we were struggling in stats trying to determine what the difference between a t-test or a p-test or a z-test was, politicians and CEOs threw out skewed statistics to their audiences in hope to monger them. We came out of stats with the ability to truly decipher what those statistics were telling us and question America's next big study. While we were stressing and shouting out numbers to give to our lab partners as they typed it into the Excel document, while also trying not to burn ourselves on the hot plate, while also measuring mass to the nearest decimal place, People at their jobs were struggling if they were giving more than one test because of the high stress environment. We, less, we left labs with not only the ability to handle that high stress, but the ability to plan out our own sort of action and go through with it. While we were determining what we were going to present on, while also staying up until midnight trying to keep our slides under six lines of text, while also memorizing math equations and reciting them to the point of saying them in our sleep, the number one fear across the world was still public speaking. We left IDS with the ability to present on whatever topic we wanted and make it look professional. What always seemed like another due date, another stressor, another gamble of whether or not my physics grade was going to go below a 90 was actually preparation for our careers all of our careers, and I know like some of you might be worried about what you're going into. I'm a tap dancing, singing, musical theater kid who graduated from this program and I still feel prepared for what I'm going into, so don't worry, guys. Schools tell us that they're preparing us for the real world, but it's MMSTC that trains us for success so that we can succeed on purpose. This is a little off topic, but today marks the two week date since I got my second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. After a year and a half of what seemed like quarantine and online school and just absolute crap is finally starting to feel a little normal. As I got injected, I couldn't help but think in 20 years, it's gonna be an MMSTC kid that's developing the next vaccine. And at the same time, it's gonna be an MMSTC kid in the Oval Office. And at the same time, it's gonna be an MMSTC kid that is teaching different kids about math and changing their lives. Speaking of, um, I hope you teachers know that you guys inspire the next generation of innovators every single year. You teach us and change us, and in turn, we change the world or overthrow the government. You never know what some of us. We did it, guys, and we did it as a family. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm really going to miss waking up at 6.50 in the morning to go to calculus, even though um, it wasn't my best class. I can't believe that as I go to college and I need help with homework, I'm not going to be able to text the tea spillers of butcher group chat and Snapchat. It's really going to mess with me. No matter what you're doing, I just want you all to know that you're doing the next right thing. And remember that even though our four years of schooling was a little different, we're the ones making the biggest difference. Thank you. Are there any questions? <laughs> And finally, to encompass it all, a memory slideshow of our past four years together.
Congratulations once again, seniors. Now we're going to have Dr. Newhoff dismiss you all. As you begin to pack up all of your things, I have a gentle reminder, if you have not picked up your t-shirt out front or your sweatshirt and your yard sign, please do so before you depart from the PAC universe. I'm gonna dismiss you by rows. How else would we do that here? Alphabetically, of course, starting with Mr. Aker's row. I'm gonna have you leave first and go out to the side doors here. So if you are in Mr. Aker's row, gather your things. And once they make their way to that door, I'll announce the next row. And who's thinking it's going to be Mrs. Sobolski's? Because it's not. <laughs> By Mr. Aker's row. 